wrestling buddies want to be your buddies? Hey, buddy. Buddy! Slamcast right here on Afterbus TV. If you're listening, you're used to listening, but guess what? This is the very first video show! Hey, hey, hey. Oh, what? Uh, yeah. Pull it up! Pull it up! Pull it up! <laughs> Just this for an hour. That's all we're doing. Yeah. Just on a loop. Totally yeah, I'm over it. that now. <laughs> worth it. You can never be over that song. Yeah, that song. Come oh, on. If, you, if you were in a car with him for as long as I was and he played it as many times as he did, you might be. I may have listened to it nine times. I heard you were sleeping for most of that. Anyway. Last, yeah, we drove, Last night. <laughs> we drove back from WrestleMania. You actually talked to me in your sleep. I don't know if you know that. Oh, boy. <laughs> I was driving, I think it was like, I don't know, one in the morning, and, and like he's, you know, Chuck's in full recline mode, and uh, at one point all I hear is, what's up, bro? And I, so I, I try to keep the conversation going, I go, oh man, there's a cow in the road. You go, uh-huh. And you just went back to sleep. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Welcome to the show, everyone. If you're watching us for the first time, well, you're definitely watching us for the first time. But if you're at Wrestling Buds, B-U-D-S, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Buds, we have been a show now for 65 or 66 episodes. Um, we do it every single week. We talk everything in the world of wrestling. We were at WrestleMania. Um, find me on Twitter at Jay Quasto. But now it is time to intro the two other gentlemen in the studio. The man to my left, he is from Houston, Texas. He is the pride of that city. He is a TCU Horn Frog. He is Chuck Rice. He's a man. What up, dude? Oh, man, just trying to catch up on some sleep today before coming in here. What a weekend. I'm on three hours. I'm just... Oh, my I'm God. I'm on Jack Depp on Mountain Dew! <laughs> what a weekend, man. Yeah. The stories, the things that happened, incredible. Which we can't... You can't necessarily... You saw more than we did, but you can't talk about it, I guess. So, you know. Well, well, I can I can tell you some things that I saw and what happened. Like, coolest experience for me this weekend was probably after WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I went with Booker and Charmel was one of their guests this weekend, so thank sure. you, Booker and Charmel as always. Um, but we rode the buses to and from the stadium and on the way back to Damn. I've never got, heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> and I just got... <laughs> He, was, he brought his kid to the ring. Is it like a villain in the Turtles? Yes. Mm. He was with Bebop and Rocksteady. Look at you know a guy. reference. I know. Well, <laughs> myself with that round of applause. <laughs> I'll, I'll but, go with the crowd. I actually knew. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you, man, just sitting there getting to pick his brain a little bit. Like, I he told me imagine. some stories about matches he had with Flair that were never on TV. <laughs> like, well, uh, back in the days, I mean, with the, the territories and whatnot, you would wrestle a guy for like 80 nights in a row. Right. And, so. he, you know, he told me some just really cool stories, but I'm not going to tell them to you all right now. No. Because while sitting there talking with him, he told me he wants to come on our show at some point. you got to be kidding me. So at some point in the near future, Mr. Steamboat will be on we the show. We might get the dragon on this show? We just might. Oh, my God. I'm into it. Yeah. So, I think we can handle it. Let's make it happen. Uh, the other man in studio, he is always hashtag vest for business. He's wearing his brand new WrestleMania t-shirt. He is the host of Dishing on Movies on the YouTube. Find him on Twitter at The Walking Dale. He's Dale Rutledge. I got a puppet. I got a puppy? Bad news. How do you know this was a new shirt? Uh, Because I saw it in your gift bag. (laughs) (laughs) And that's just where... (laughs) Did you see the the logo for next year is just a star right here where the play button is for this year. They really aren't numbering them anymore. I mean, I get it. Hey, you know what? I'm okay with the star in Dallas. Yes, that, it makes know. perfect yeah. sense. 100,000 people. Apparently, they have a big TV screen. Oh, yeah. Did I, they hit that thing with the football once? I don't know how they're going to do it in there I'll with try. that screen because it's like, you know, I, I've been there for a football game. I've been there for a concert. Right. And you can't focus on what's happening on the field because the screen's so huge. Really? You also have a little ADD, so... No, no, dude. I'm telling you, you look around the stadium, and everyone's just sitting up looking like this. Hmm. 
Well, it's kind of like at a, a WWE event, though, because Levi Stadium, we had 77,000 strong, and depending on where you were, it was you, you caught yourself looking up at the Jumbotron. I couldn't actually see the screen from where I was sitting. Was... Is that because you were on the floor? Yeah. Yeah, because you were like six rows behind yeah. the ring. That's yeah, that. sorry about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry about I that. wish you died in the womb! <laughs> Obstructing his view of the screen, you know? Exactly. Exactly. But what a weekend it was, and we hope you enjoyed all our videos and our pictures that we put on social media for all those of you who couldn't be there. But we were there in spirit, right there with you. So, Mike's, I want to be at 2,000 by the end of this damn week. So make it happen. Just spread that page around. We need it. Spread that page. Why are you golem with it? Spread. I don't we know. Needs it. We need it. It's precious. <laughs> spread it around like, so what's that chocolate spread? Nutella. Nutella, our Facebook page everywhere. <laughs> wow. I'm so sure. glad we're doing videos so people can see sure. people can see our stupidity right up close. <laughs> I love how he roped us into that. Uh, yeah, I have nothing to do with this Nutella, as you call it. You've never had Nutella? Yes, of course. I oh, have. dear. He hosts a cooking show, dude. Well, I, he was pretending not to know Nutella. <laughs> Don't know, sell me on Nutella, though. You Dale. know what I do know now what? is Paige in person. She was really, really sweet since we're sharing stories. She's the best, right? She's like the cutest thing ever. I wanted She's to be my new, my new best friend. I think she kind of is. She might be. We had a good time. Yeah. She was very friendly. She even retweeted a photo that we took together. That, yeah. I think that makes us best friends. Does that make you besties now? <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to confer on In that. In modern day society, I think a retweet means besties. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I'll go with it. Thanks, Paige. Yeah. We also got to give a shout out to <laughs> the whole weekend. If it was a Dallas Cowboys no, t-shirt. No, Surprisingly, no. No, it is funny. Um, it was a like a Richard Nixon campaign shirt that just had Richard Nixon's face. And it was hilarious. Retro. Oh, he was a former president. And I don't then he know got why in trouble. I just don't know why it's funny, though. That's I don't know. But Watergate? Was because because, was because he used to be the president? He was. And then he got in trouble and, and did this. Yeah. I am not a crook. I that saw the Watergate thing. building just the other day. It's A, not really directly in D.C. and B, very small. And I hear it's not even wet. Oh, dear Lord. Sorry. That was my fault, guys. That one's on me. Sometimes things are on me. Uh, that was all my bad. Oh, uh, boy. Let's talk about wrestling. Yeah, I don't have any good stories. I mean, we, we got to talk to all members of New Day. Yeah. Love them all. Um, did th- you meet Rusev ever? No. I, I did not meet Rusev. He, he scares me. Oh. But it was great hanging out with Xavier, Kofi, and E, and we really hope a new direction happens for the New Day sometime soon. <laughs> Depending on how you read Biggie's tweet, it makes you wonder. Yeah, that New Day sucks uh, chant was going pretty strong at Raw. Wow. How was they received it, it, at the uh, at WrestleMania? I wasn't out there quite yet for when they came out. Or it, did they even come out? It was early. That, that match was fantastic, the Fatal 4-Way. It was, um, the, the, the stadium was still filling at the time. Yeah. But last night, wow, that crowd was crazier than last year's Raw crowd. Okay, so they were ridiculously wrong, and yet at the same time, ridiculously funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Nikki and let's, Brie were Let's not it. even mention what... I mean, yeah. that's like misogynistic. Yeah, very really. misogynistic. We don't agree with that. We don't agree with it. Really the best, yeah. Uh, what we did have a great time doing was our live podcast. Oh, yeah. We opened up the, the show for the live podcast. Yeah, how fun was a lot that? of good folks showed up to that thing. It was a lot of fun. We did. We actually got a cool picture. We took, like, a big selfie. And we got a really nice turnout at Cafe for Scotty. The best part is the venue did nothing to promote it like they said they would. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. And Johnny ruined some couple's date. Oh, did yeah. you see they were next door? You called them out. They left and went <laughs> oh, they, <laughs> did to they? the place next door. <laughs> they did. Well, well, I did say, so let's be honest. If you're on a date, you could afford something better, buddy. Yeah, so well, you showed him up. So he took her to the hot spot right next door. <laughs> Hit the bricks, Roy. <laughs> he will probably not be liking our Facebook page, okay? That's yeah. fine. But uh, do we have that picture, I believe, of the, of the live podcast? Yeah, we got that that was a really fun thing. Uh, let's get into WrestleMania because we have not only we have book. Well, no, let's go to Booker well, T first. Yeah. Well, b- b- before we do that, can we just talk about the NXT show that happened at go, WrestleMania? Go weekend? for it. Go sure. for it. Sure. One of the coolest experiences for a live wrestling show I've been to. I've heard. I've heard it was in fi- uh, fifty one hundred people. Yeah. It was. It was really special, um, and it was really cool too because you know backstage that yeah. normally wouldn't be at an NXT show. You know, Vince was there, Stephanie was there, yeah. Shawn Michaels was there. X Pac was there. You know, all these people. Thank God X Pac found time in his yeah. car. <laughs> I like how you threw X Pac. Hey, Six listen, was I like, there. I, look, I like X Pac. I think he's a no, phenomenal I, wrestler. We all do. And it's just funny you put him in that group of like people yeah. right there. Well, but just you're seeing, welcome. Just seeing the smile on Vince's face while he was watching this, it was like you could see the smile on his on his mouth and the dollar signs in his eyes. Yeah, maybe he'll learn a little something on how to book a show by watching NXT. I, I don't like moving my lips. Damn it! My face. Damn it! <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> we have a huge show. We have Booker T. We have Alex Riley and Damian Sandow. Good Damian Mizdow. Damian Mizdow. For now. For now. I don't Mizdow think he's Mizdow anymore. He was at Raw. He was last night. Yeah. That's what the screen said. Well, on Monday Night Raw, we'll see what happens. So who do we go to first? a Rye. Let's go to a Rye. Yeah. a Rye is one of our new best friends in the show. He's been on a bunch, and uh, God, he's just great to talk to. He's very motivating. So uh, let's just talk. Let's call a Rye. Yeah, he's a Cowboys fan. All right. Coming off of WrestleMania weekend, we have to have a huge show, so we are excited to have him back. He is one of our best friends on the show. Hot damn. Oh, it feels good that I don't have to call him the analyst anymore. Why is that? Because he is now an active WWE superstar once again. You can find him on Twitter at Alex Riley. Does it feel good? It feels great, guys. Yeah. No more <laughs> analysts. Back inside the ring. And I got to say, I owe a lot of this to the wrestling compadres. Oh, come- day one, you were kind of in Booker's corner since day one. But mine, <laughs> I think a couple months after our relationship started, you, uh, you started backing Alex Riley and supporting him. 100%, and uh, I sincerely appreciate everything that you guys have done because I, I was listening mm. to a couple of the things that was said on this show. We certainly watched the uh, pre-show pose down that you guys went a thousand miles an hour to help promote. And, uh, you know, it's funny how these things kind of work out sometimes. So, again, my uh, my gratitude towards you, and thank you again so much. Well, we couldn't, we couldn't be more happy to have you back in the ring, to be honest. It's been great to have you on NXT. And we should talk about, firstly, your WrestleMania performance right right uh, just a couple days ago yeah it, it was incredible um, i was hoping all week that i would be able to slide into that and you know honestly when there's when there's 30 positions announced um on a card you know i, I would almost have been a tiny bit insulted if i didn't get a chance to go in and i, and I certainly didn't want to feel that way so i'm glad there was room for me uh, i find out i found out the day of i was very excited um, I had flown my girlfriend out there and, and my family, um, my mother and father there for the first time ever. So uh, wow. it was cool to get out there. Yeah, it was cool to just make the walk, you know, make, walk the ramp and uh, be out there. And, uh, and I was third eliminated, so it was, uh, you know, it wasn't the, the best showing in the Battle Royal, but but just to be out there was was fantastic. And, and I showed a little bit of rage, had a, had a moment of rage. <laughs> yeah, you did. Uh, again, so it has to follow me everywhere I go in my career for whatever reason. But, uh, <laughs> but He's not making there was some rage, days. and we were out, as Booker would say. We were out right after that. So, But it was a great experience. Now, on the positive note, yeah, you were third eliminated, but now we just look to the future. You say, okay, WrestleMania 31, I was there, I had a cool moment, now it's time to step it up. WrestleMania 32, let's get a bigger spot. So you have 362 some odd days to get yourself there. Absolutely, and and I think, um, you know, the start is NXT. I I was given a great opportunity down at NXT. Uh, Kevin Owens was really the guy that kind of gave it to me by uh, by doing what he did. Um, I think it was it was really a home run, man. I mean, all, all those pieces came together very well. Uh, it got a good reaction uh, from the WWE universe. Uh, certainly, the people that were there at Full Sail enjoyed it um, that night. So, I think you're right. I, I think you know the sky's the limit at this point um, for what's going to happen next year. I have a you know a whole year to get. I can't wait. Mm-hmm. Um, Huge cowboy fan, so hell yeah! You know, to be out, yeah, to be out there in Texas and and to be a part of another WrestleMania, a bigger part of another WrestleMania, will be fantastic. And I, and I, uh, you know, I hope it's in my future. It's funny you say that because Chuck is a massive Cowboys fan, and we hear about it just about every week. Yeah, so you, <laughs> so well, you, you can both enjoy you know, America's that team. team. Yeah, America's team, yeah. America. So the, yeah, we're talking. Chuck, about... Chuck, you didn't you didn't tell you didn't tell them anything that happened at the WrestleMania after party, right? I hope they know nothing, sir. Nothing. <laughs> All right, we save those stories for off the air. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's a, it's a good thing Dale and I weren't important enough to get to that party. <laughs> uh, so that I mean, we're talking WrestleMania 32, but let's talk more immediate. I mean, do you know what the plan is moving forward? Are you going to stay on the NXT roster, or, or are you doing more things on you know Raw after your your WrestleMania debut, or, or, or what are we thinking? You know, I, I don't know. I uh, obviously in. You know, I've, I've learned this over the years of being with the WWE is that it's you really do find out what you're doing the day of. Yeah. And sometimes you don't think you're being thought about or you're forgotten about, and then you show up one day and you know you got a match on Monday Night Raw and you're you know you're winning the U.S. title. So that that's just kind of how it 
and the internet, um, they really do just keep that room very tight where they make all those decisions and they just don't let information out. But I, but I, you know, I expect big things. I, I was really happy with the Kevin Owens stuff. Um, I'd like to get my hands on him again. Uh, it was fun being out there. I felt like I just, you know, I, I really hadn't lost a step. It, if not, it had gotten better just by by being um, an analyst and, and watching every single moment in detail of WWE programming over the last two years and having to, you know, talk about it and have an opinion about it and, uh, you know, watch what worked and what didn't work. So so I really do think I'm, I'm having some of the best matches of my career at this point. Um, I'd like to do them on the grand stage. So, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for Raw or SmackDown to happen. And, and NXT is getting so big, guys, these days that – um, you know, it's it's not even it's not even a developmental territory anymore. I mean, on Monday Night Raw a couple nights ago, they were, you know, you hear NXT chants yeah. in the middle of Monday Night Raw with with you know top name guys. I think Randy was in there at the time, Roman was in there at the time, and, and they're trying to get on NXT as well. Uh, I'm just going to run with it because it's a massive platform, and it's only getting bigger every day. Now, Alex, you have been talking about a minute ago social media and how important it is these days and you're a free man now so i want to know what's the new hashtag going to be <laughs> well i'm not i'm not i'm not totally free now and I, they could throw me back in that cage whenever they want but I, yeah no i was i was free for a night I, I busted open and um you know certainly certainly free at wrestlemania 31 but but free to me is you know being on monday night raw every you know every week being on friday night smackdown being being the united states champion mm-hmm. uh, uh, being the WWE champion, so uh, you know, I, I guess I guess I'm going to continue to use that until I become WWE champion. If there it you works. go. There it is. Uh, or yeah, <laughs> there it is, right there. Yeah, or you know, only the beginning because uh, you know I, I think we've uh, we've been out of the cage for about a month, and, and I'd like to stay out this time for a long time. <laughs> well, I have a question. Do you mind if we pitch you a new hashtag? Not at all. I actually, no matter what it is, because it's you guys, I'd probably just about hashtag Riley Rage. I love it. Okay. Well, I, I, I yeah. I, I mean, I, I certainly developed a lot of it. You know, I, I feel over the last few years. You know, I hope I hope people saw that when I came out through the curtain and, and had a couple matches against Kevin Owens. So, I, you know, I, I think it works. I mean, I would say it doesn't seem like you missed a step, and you're, you look in great shape. I mean, everything, it's almost you didn't take a, you know, was it two-year break, basically, from, from being inside the, the active roster. It, it's amazing to, to see that still living inside of you, and, and the passion is very, yeah. very obvious from that first match that you had, you know, less than a month ago where, where you got really emotional in the ring. It's just been great to see this yeah. ride happen for you again, and, and we couldn't be more elated. I mean, Alex, well, yeah. oh, who are some people in NXT that you would love to face now? Oh, man, you know, I, uh, you know, it's funny. You've seen a lot of the guys that were established down there go up and do so well on Raw um, oh. over the last six months, I guess. And Ascension, I guess, I know Finn Balor's doing live events. Uh, Sammy, um, you know, they're, they're now bouncing him back and forth. Neville had a had a great debut last night, and then after the Lucha Dragons last night, I would have wow. said, I, I don't know. I mean, Ty, Tyler's fantastic. Tyler Breeze, is, he does a great job with his character. Um, there's a lot of material there. He's great in the ring. Um, you know, I think we could play off each other very well, uh, considering that I'm kind of I'm different now. I've come back as a as a different Riley, and 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 he's doing the pretty boy thing. So uh, he he would be he would be ideal for me. I think we could have some great matches, and um, you know, certainly a lot of promo material there too. He's he, he's going to be another one that's going to be just. Uh, off the chart successful when he finally gets his opportunity up on the big stage. And also another guy I think we should mention, um, he was your first victim when you got back to the ring. You talk about being able to maximize your TV time. Like we talk about that's how Sandow did when he was doing all his impressions. You know, CJ Parker just gets it, doesn't he? Like he really knows how to make his TV time count, and he did the same thing with you. Yeah, w- without a doubt. As CJ Parker, um, you know, from from the moment I met CJ Parker, I just I had a lot of respect for him. He's a uh, a he's a good dude. Uh, he's very dedicated to the business. He's he's extremely dedicated. He knows that character inside and out. I've seen him a couple nights, um, you know, at the performance center when we're we're doing character development. 
he's gone for six, eight minutes on, 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 on you know, the God knows what, the recycling and, uh, oh you God. know, SeaWorld and all this, all this nonsense. So, yeah, and he's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, he's very, very good. Um, certainly great at the backstage stuff uh, when it comes to promos. And, and, and I was so happy when I, uh, when I fi- found out that I was going to face him, you know, r- right from the start because he, he, he is very good and uh, a great bad guy, a great heel, and really knows. I did, we did it, like you said, we did a pre-tape prior to the match um, that was supposed to be about me, you know, getting my opportunity and, and telling William Regal uh, that I quit. And, and, and to battle back and forth with CJ is, is tough because he does. He does a great job of using his face yep. and he's not speaking and, and he's always trying to steal the spotlight. So, so another guy that would be absolutely you know, fantastic to work with. I could only imagine in, in, in the promo class when <laughs> he gets up, you're like, oh, so just going to cut his Blackfish promo again. Here we go. <laughs> 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 I mean, and, you know, some of the some of the references he's making, and uh, and and he believes it. And that's that's the most important thing, you, and believe in it 100. percent And and he does so. Nice. So it, it, take us through a day now, because obviously in the performance center, I imagine the last two weeks, everything ready to go as far as announcing. Now, is, is it a kind of a weird transition that you're bringing all your gear back to the performance center, and now you you really don't? The future's kind of wide open. Well, you know, it, it's funny, and I, I told this story a couple times. Um, you know, you, you said I, I came out of the curtain and I was in a, you know, I was in decent shape, and I, you know, I, I really felt against Kevin Owens and CJ that, that the matches went really well um, because I never, and this is this is one hundred percent the truth, and you know, I, I haven't changed the story because I've gotten the opportunity, or you know. It's just the way it played. I never in my mind was not a pro wrestler. Right. Ever. You know, I and, and that's where a lot of the pain came from. Was I, I, it's not like I was, um, you know, cer- certainly grateful for the opportunity. And, and I really did enjoy, once the camera was on, talking WWE. Because I do love sports. I love competition. I love the WWE. And it's, and it's, e- and it's easy for me to do because I, because I thoroughly, um, you know, I have an investment and the people that I came up with, uh, and the wrestlers that you know that I that I like, I have opinions. So, um, but it wasn't like I I wasn't a part of the company anymore. I was there watching everybody get and and having to talk about it. So it did create a lot of pain for me, you know, day after day, week after week, month after month, showing up as a pro wrestler, as a wrestling talent, and being told, you know you're sitting here and, and asking and asking and asking. Well, can I do this? Well, can I do that? Um, and just being told no. You know, we, we don't have room for you right now. And well, when will you? Well, we don't know. You know, maybe next week, maybe next month. Uh, you know, I'm told one weekend I'm going to fly out. Then then I'm then I'm then I don't. You know, I'm, I'm getting all excited. Friday morning, I get a call, and now I'm not flying out yeah. uh, to live events. So, so so that so that can take its toll on you. Um, but I never stopped. I I am very proud of myself in that regard, and, and that's why I kind of got emotional after the C.J. Parker match because it, it is, to me, personally, and and a lot of people would never understand this, but it's the greatest accomplishment of my life. That match with C.J. Parker, to me, no matter what I do, if I become WWE champion or not one day, that will always be the most important match in my career and, and the one that I hold more, most dear. And it's a three-minute match that stopped. Mm-hmm. I would show up at the Performance Center after being told that uh, there was no room for me on NXT live event, you know. And, and now, now you're looking at the, the Alex Riley that was part of the Florida live event, and being told that there's no room for him. And, and I had to go back to my home and a wonder why, because there is no answer. B, you know, find a way to continue to show up and continue to get in the ring and continue to get beat up. Um, and there were times I was wondering why I was doing it, and people were asking me why. P- people in very high-powered positions were asking me, well, why, why are you doing this? You're crazy. What, what are you doing? Why are you beating yourself up? You're a commentator. Just enjoy. And this is the thing that used to frustrate me more than anything else, is just, just enjoy having a job. Right. And I said, well, what, what, what you know, Part of my language. What the fuck? You know what the fuck is that? What what is what is enjoy having a job? My goal here was <laughs> is that is that people's goal is to have a job here or like 
Okay, so my job is to wake up every day, no matter what I'm doing, and try to become WWE champion. That's my job. Yes, sir. You know, and I think it should be everybody else's job and it doesn't have a job and be thankful you have a job. I just, I never understood that. And, and I heard that a couple times and it was it was very, very frustrating and, and, I, and very confusing. Um, so I'm, I'm very gr- grateful that I got the opportunity, really, to, to get back out there and... Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad it went well, and, and I don't know if it, it wasn't going to go well because I, I really do, like you said, I was very, very prepared for it, and I wanted it very badly. And what's great about your story and, and everything you just said is it doesn't matter what profession anyone's in, they can take a lesson in that. It's it's you have to not give up. You have to keep trudging ahead. You have to keep getting better every single day. And the best part about you is your new journey, it is just beginning, brother, and we are, uh, we are honored to be a part of it, and uh, you know we're going to keep doing everything we can to get this uh riley rage moving forward yeah thanks man and you're right it's it's you know the one thing i learned from this and you know maybe it took it took all this to learn it's like you just you know don't if anybody ever tells you what you are or you can't you know here you're not doing this or this is what you're going to be you just never just don't ever get who you are and what you think and what you can do you know because i was told so many times who I was, and I just, you know, I just continued to reject it and say, you know, well, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna decide that. <laughs> just, just right. you know, you're gonna get back out there, and and I'll make that decision. So it, was, it is, it's a, it's a hell of a lesson and and something that I'm very proud of. Amen to that, indeed. And uh, well, we we really appreciate your time. I mean, this is a huge show for us. WrestleMania, so no one better than to have you on, considering uh, your journey's been incredible, and, and we can't wait to see more, and obviously we'll have you on the show anytime you want, so hit us up, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and again, uh, on, on a very real note, thank you guys so much, because you were a major part of this, and uh, and we're always in my corner, and you know, I, I greatly appreciate it, so of thank course. you. Mm-hmm. We're thank honored. you. Alright, well, we'll talk to you soon. Have a great rest of the week, man. Alright, guys, thank you. Take care. You got it. Thanks a lot. Bye. Man, talking to A-Rod, it just makes me want to, like, lift weights. You know what I mean? Just I, Yeah. I mean, he's just such a cool dude anyway. He's the best. His attitude really is the only way I think you can survive in the wrestling world or, or in life in general. I was going to say, everything he says, you can relate it to any profession. We have so, so many listeners hustling our asses off. It doesn't matter if you're in Des Moines or if you're in Jersey, whatever you do, you want to be the best at what you what you do. What you do. And you got to work every day towards yeah. it. Yeah. Well, the other thing you can say about him is, you know, they always say a good wrestler is someone who is kind of an extension of the real se- of the real selves. Yeah. And Alex Riley epitomizes that to me, you know, he takes that passion that he has in life and he shows it in the ring. And I think it translates well with the fans. And it really does and and people are really getting they're so excited to see him back. I know just it's an honor to hear him say that that our show helped that. Yeah. Which I'm, that's very humbling. You know, you know, getting to meet him in person this weekend like when when he realized who I was and you know this was our show, yeah. he was so appreciative. That's like, crazy just, to like, me. Yeah. I, I was I was taken aback by it because it was in front of a bunch of people and he was just like, "Thank you, you know, like you guys helped." get me to where I am right now. And I'm like, wow, it was very humbling. You what know? a genuine guy. I love that. And the fact, I mean, and the dude's a world-class athlete. He was a Division One football player, a blue chip NXT, you know, competitor. And yeah. now, finally, he's allowed to, to show what he can do. And I think there's, man, the future's looking real bright regardless. Yeah, I hope they let him run with Max. Yeah. He, he, yeah, he won't drop that ball. Speaking of, you know who's never dropped the ball? Booker T. Booker T. Why don't we just jump right into Booker T, and then we'll talk WrestleMania, then we'll get into Damian Mizdow. So, let's call Booker. All right, it is that time once again. This is the first show after WrestleMania, so you know we have to talk to WWE Hall of Famer. Find him on Twitter, at BookerT5X. He's the godfather of reality of wrestling, the flagship of Texas wrestling, and the godfather of this show. Please welcome Booker T. Hello, sir. Hey, what's going on now? Not much. First question we have to ask, uh, when that when Brock Lesnar flipped that announcer tape, did that hit you? We couldn't tell how bad you guys got hit with that thing. Yeah, man, it caught me pretty good. Uh, I mean, up around the top of the head, actually. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, I'm okay. I was um, unexpected, I think, more than anything. Um, I definitely didn't expect Rock to, you know, turn the table over on us. Uh, you know, it's always been the wrestler. I uh, would get the brunt or something like that, not the uh, commentary team. But uh, you, if you notice the... Uh, German announcers, you know, they did the right thing by catching for higher ground. <laughs> I mean, at least you didn't get the Michael Cole treatment. I guess that's a plus side. 
Yeah, yeah, well, you know, there was no need for me to get the Michael Cole treatment. You know what I mean? I was out already. <laughs> you know, so, you know, there's no fun in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a, t- a terrifying endeavor there. It makes me wonder how long Cole's going to be out. It might just be you and JBL for a while. Who knows? Hopefully. Hopefully it will be. Ah! <laughs> right here first. Nice. <laughs> so overall thoughts of WrestleMania. I mean, what a show it was. I think it, it, it just surpassed so many expectations, so many great moments. Um, obviously, you were there for the pre-show. Is there any one moment or two moments that really stand out for you? Um, uh, perhaps probably just the... Uh... Seth Rollins, um, Randy Orton, you know, finish of that match right there. You know, um, Randy Orton pulling off another, you know, dramatic, you know, RKO. It was, it was beautiful. Um, those guys went out there and performed, brought it to another level. It's great to see Seth Rollins go out there and put himself in position to, you know, uh, move to the next level, which he has. Now he's a WWE World Great Champion. So uh, it was a great night. It was a great night. Uh, big show, um, actually, um, on the kickoff show, got a chance to finally uh, solidify his greatness. And Actually, his giantness, you know, and uh, you know, um, finally, I'm cashing in on something like the um, Under the Giant Memorial Cup. So it was, it was a great night. It was a great night, all in all. Absolutely. Now, Booker, you played detective this weekend, if I'm understanding correctly. How many even kicked off? Oh yeah, yeah. A couple of guys actually uh, snuck in with the uh, ring crew, uh, uh, just the crew guys in general, and um, stayed up top there. Well, you know, uh, people start you know moving around a little bit, and then I kind of noticed these two guys that were out of character. They didn't look like they were you know, in the right place um, and, um, that they should have been, which was outside of the arena. And um, one of the guys, I'm doing my my prep for the show. He came up to me and actually for an autograph, and I'm like, look, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm working here, you know what I mean? Uh, normally the workers are told not to um, say anything or do anything um, to the talent, you know what I mean? So just kind of beat these two guys totally out of place, so I had them um, apprehended them, oh. um, took, them took them down, um, you know, had them um, had the police check them out. They actually were searched and they had all kind of uh, um, bogus identification on them, you know, as well as uh, passes to get in and whatnot that they had officially made up, you know. So yeah, I, I did fall a crime. Uh, <laughs> they got two guys kicked out of the uh, Levi Stadium. Nice. Wow, citizens arrest. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that is classic. So we can add a detective to Booker's resume now. Yeah, right? I tell when, you know, things are out of place, you know what I mean? These two guys, they just look like they were out of place. You know, when you're from the street, you notice that kind of stuff because Byron Saxon um, noticed these same two guys and, you know, he didn't do anything. He didn't see anything, you know, but he's from the suburbs. <laughs> <laughs> Those two guys must have peed themselves when you figured them out. Oh, oh my God. That's hilarious. Well, trust me, you don't want to be on the bad side of Booker's anger. I've been there before. It's not pretty. <laughs> You're usually there. Hey, man, so. you know, I wasn't angry. You know what I mean? That's just how, you know, um, these guys were, you know, just just, just, just say um, if they were there to do some harm. You know what I mean? Um, you know, the Boston bombing wasn't that far, um, you know, from, you know, uh, you know, removed from, you know, uh, you know, something like that happening. So, I mean, we leave our state. It was 70, almost 73,000 people there. You know what I mean? These guys could have actually really done something stupid. You know, and um, it could have been a not so great night. So I just, you know, I was just in the right place at the right time. You know, and it was almost like they were here as cops because after I got these guys apprehended and threw out, all of the cops came out, the dogs came out, all the security came out. It was crazy. <laughs> you know, so, uh, it, was, it was kind of funny at the same time. I love that. Uh, before we leave, you're, you're just exhausted. you got a busy day ahead. Um, obviously, you have a very good relationship with The Undertaker. Um, you know, it, it was great to see him back, and, and we thought he looked really, really good, uh, him and Bray. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if this turns into anything down the road. What were your overall thoughts on, on that match? You know, um, you said it. Uh, the Undertaker did look good. Uh, he looked better than we've seen the Undertaker look in, in quite some time. You know, so uh, the match was, you know, typical um, Undertaker uh, going out there performing, taking the crowd on a ride. You know, giving that young guy, I mean, Bray Wyatt, a, a chance to step up. You know, uh, you know, because all of us, you know, we get into that match with Undertaker is something totally different for each and every one of us. It's something different. You know, and I'm sure with Bray Wyatt actually. You know, uh, 
at that moment in, in there with the Undertaker at WrestleMania in front of 70,000 people. I mean, I'm sure it was great for him, you know. So he learned so much from that match. He's going to be able to take away so much from that match and move on to the future. I don't see that, that feud um, lasting uh, too much longer than um, WrestleMania. I think it should be something that should be that go. Um, Bray Wyatt is the future. Bray Wyatt is the future of the WWE. But he had to uh, take that test just like so many of us had to take. So um, it was a great moment, um, nostalgic moment um, for, for Bray Wyatt, like I say, but a um, history-making moment in so many different ways for that young kid as well. So I just want to see um, Bray Wyatt move on to the next level. Um, Undertaker, of course, uh, 32 is going to be coming up um, in, in Dallas. Sherry uh, Land, 100,000 people. I'm sure the Undertaker is going to be um, ready, willing, and able to make that walk one more time. Absolutely. Now, Booker, WrestleMania is in our rearview window. But we have another big event coming up April 11th. Well, you do. Reality of Wrestling. What... Are you excited for it, April 11th? Yeah, man, it's gonna be a great night. You know, uh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a huge night. Uh, oh man, uh, we're gonna be drinking steamboat. It's gonna be there. That, that's gonna be awesome. You know, Brett uh, the Hitman Hart's gonna be there. You know, my former trainer Ivan Putski is gonna be um, somewhere lingering around. You know, wow. so it's gonna be great. It's gonna be an um, awesome night. The reality of wrestling. More importantly, on the fans, I'm um, just gonna get a chance to. You know, uh, meet and greet and see those guys. Um, Red Heart and Steamboat is coming in our area. Um, it's the first time, so I'm sure it's going to be a lot of people that want to come out and see them. You know, um, it's going to be from, from the oldest to the youngest going to want to come out and uh, you know, see these guys. You know, because uh, WrestleMania 3, of course, with Steamboat out there doing his thing and, and Bret Hart being you know, Best there is, best there was, best there ever will be. It's gonna be a great night. Uh, we all live wrestling, uh, like like always, but um, not to overshadow the, the talent. The talent is going to go out there and perform, you know, um, followed by our new reality, reality wrestling um, champion, heavyweight champion. I'm sure he's going to be there. The mysterious Q is going to be looking to get back in the saddle again. Um, Rufus Ryan Davidson, I'm sure he's he's got um, um, some uh, payback he want to get on on Brian Keith, you know, a, a black cowboy, you know, the fastest man in the West. Uh, I tell you, it's going to be uh, it's going to be uh, an awesome, awesome show, and I will be there. Um, I will be just uh, making my way back from. Qatar, um, make a little trip over there to do some work, um, you know, promote my book and whatnot. So, but it's gonna be a great night. Uh, it's gonna be a great night. Next week, you guys don't want to miss out. Don't want to get shut out. Reality is West Wing three. Eleventh is going down. Sounds good. April eleventh, it is Booker T. Once I'm sorry, again, April April eleventh. That's not not it. April eleventh, of course. <laughs> RealityWrestling dot com. Booker T. Thanks so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the week. Try to get some rest, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. No rest for the weary, bro. That's right. I always say, now can you dig that, sucker? Not a bad way to start post WrestleMania week. We had Alex Riley, we had Booker T. Now we got to talk WrestleMania. Please, so much. I've been waiting. Where do we start? I, mean, I, <laughs> I guess we got to start at the fact that we have a new. WWE World Heavyweight Champion and Seth Rollins. What a way to wow. do that, too. Wow. I mean, wow. executed perfectly. Yeah, have they ever done it where the match was still live like that before? Because I, I not a mania. I know a lot of people were kind of thrown off by the fact that it became a triple threat, but I thought that was a really smooth move, and to not kind of be redundant because almost every time outside of John Cena and Mizdow, I, I believe. They've just been like, I'm talking into the microphone. I get knocked out. You're going to take my title. That's yeah. kind of been the, the the call to action for that thing. The, the way they did it was perfect because it almost left it unpredictable. Uh, yeah, I was like, man, he's, he, he could lose this. Well, like, you know what's crazy? I really forgot about the damn briefcase. <laughs> which which I think at this point we need to give you know props to both Brock and Roman Reigns because yep. they stepped up to the point doubting they could. That was definitely uh, a JR slobber knocker kind of match. because. Wow. Wow. I mean, it, it got just from the first blows. They looked like they were not pulling any punches on this thing. Lesnar was busted open. They, oh, he yeah. was busted open in the first three minutes. Yeah, he he does kind of bleed easily, it seems. But he really got bloody, especially when he got ran into that uh, ring post. That was extreme. But Reigns, I gotta say, he he helped carry this match over and just looked strong the whole time. He sold everything Brock was doing. I don't even know if you have to sell what, what Brock does. He really. But I don't think so. You have to just survive. <laughs> that <laughs> moment where he laughed though when he was getting slapped in the face and just started laughing. Yeah. I, oh, I was, was great. completely into him from that moment on. Like he definitely... <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. And 
the outcome of this match really helps him in the long run. I don't well, think it makes him look weak I by see, losing. I see your point. I mean, I, I guess we can't judge everything based off of the Monday Night Raw audience in San Jose because they booed him out of the building. That audience doesn't count. You're probably right. That's not the... Um, because, I mean, the stuff they were saying was crazy. I'm lost. I think that sets up a world of possibilities. Yeah. I don't know. And how strong is it to have Brock come back the next day, oh. challenge for that belt, and then just throw a tantrum when he can't get it and then get suspended? Like, what a great way to keep him off of, of TV again. For Poor Michael while. Cole. I'm on a roll, baby. <laughs> R. I R. love P. the photo of his shoe. <laughs> R.I.P. Michael Cole's shoe. <laughs> well, that yeah, that, that's the thing. So now he's suspended... Uh, he, okay, so he resigned. Right. We don't know how many appearances that means. Nope. Multi year is all they said. So now we're not going to. When the hell are we going to see him again? I mean, he's not going to change the way he does business. Yeah, it's just I probably mean, SummerSlam. I mean, honestly, great. It takes him off TV for a little bit. It, you know, that was going to happen anyway. Yep. It gives Roman Reigns a chance, you know, to chase this title from and Seth Orton Rollins, too, according to last night. You know, and I and I think we'll see Brock Lesnar maybe at Extreme Rules, maybe. Maybe. He might be there, but he won't be wrestling. That's my, my guess. He might mess up some stuff. I mean, I, I'm i intrigued to see how this all plays out at this point. Yeah, because yeah, you know what I mean? Like, what's going to cause them to want him back? I mean, Heyman will figure out a deal or something. That's true. Know. His father was an attorney. <laughs> no, I just thought that was such good storytelling. But when they said the match was going to happen... At, I'd be uh, like, yes, it is. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was uh, a telltale. But, I mean, how cool that Rollins got to go be on um, the Today Show as well. That's that's a pretty rare showing for the WWE champion. Talk about a whirlwind day. I, I'm assuming he flew red eye to New York, and then flew bam back out to California. Yeah. Well, I know he came by the after the post WrestleMania party for like a minute. Right. He came in, was in the doorway, looked around, and was like gone. He was probably in a jet. Like not just yeah, he I, wasn't flying commercial. No, yeah, he, but good <laughs> good on him to get to do that as the new champ. That's cool. Yeah, and I, I didn't see. Wow, I, I and I and yeah. I loved on that note. I loved how Stephanie on Raw was like, you know, Brock, you were booked for that. Right, but, right, right. But as since you Brock didn't get the job done, yeah. <laughs> as if they would ever trust Brock to go on a big show like that and be an ambassador for yeah. them for that kind of situation. No, probably, <laughs> probably, probably been not. Sports Center or bust for Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. If you're not talking to Michelle Beadle. We're not sending you. Uh-uh. Uh, yeah, I mean, now we have Seth Rollins as the new champion, and wow, what a journey he's had. You know, just seven, eight years ago, Ring of, Nigel McGuinness really helped along the way, and yeah. wow, going to FCW, then NXT, and The Shield, and now here you go, and and he's a smarmy, slimy heel, and he's, he's really old school. I mean, look at NXT as a whole for the WrestleMania card. There was someone from the NXT camp on every single match, except for Triple H and Sting, obviously. But, I mean, it's just, NXT has taken over from the show, how the crowd reacted. I heard there was, like, better than WrestleMania chance, although that hadn't happened yet. But, I mean, like, look, everybody's super into the NXT brand. Look, that might have been a 5,000-person crowd, but I'm telling you, it felt like 20,000. Yeah. Like, the intensity in that building for that live NXT show, the passion those guys have when you talk to them. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. And the crowd borderline hijacked Monday Night Raw with the NXT chants. Which I love the fact they're so passionate about it, but it's kind of interesting. I'm not sure. I guess they're saying they want the main roster to be more like NXT as far as story and matches. I'm not quite sure what the... I mean, it's just the cool kid yeah. you know, on mean, the block. I don't think it's really much thought behind it, just the fact that they're enjoying the product and letting it be known. Yeah, But, I mean, good for Lucha Jackson being out there. And Neville, too. Yeah. And Neville was, I mean, was doing great. I'm torn between that one because I want Axelmania to run wild <laughs> all the way to... <laughs> it's actually... Extreme rules now. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Axel makes- Neville was in fast forward last oh night. Like, gosh. like Axel, and Axel's a great wrestler. He could not even keep up with the speed of Adrian Neville and Kalisto. Both of them. It was, and I've seen them both wrestle in NXT, yeah. but for some reason, watching them on Raw was like it was like watching not only a breath of fresh air, but just something we'd never seen before. Yeah. Well, I'm sure their intensity level was up higher than normal too. I mean, like that's your chance. This is it. This is what you've worked for. You know, this is that moment. Either you do good, or you 
don't see you again for a while. I mean, this was the second time Sin Cara debuted on the Raw after WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> if you want to think about it. Yeah, everyone's talking about Kalisto, but yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think it was great and uh, nice to see as many NXT people as possible. Hopefully this isn't the, you know, the end of more guys coming up for the next few months. Yeah, but, uh, yeah I want to know when we're going to see some more NXT women come we up to the main it. roster. The Divas roster needs that. It's like, how many six-woman tags are you going to have? Or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it might be Charlotte, and that's I think that's kind of it. I mean, last year they only brought up Paige, really. Emma was brought up a little before yeah. WrestleMania. And then I that, want them to bring up Bailey. AJ was wearing a Bailey t-shirt last night. Yeah, I thought that was that's a nice little cool. throw-out. She really seems to be a fan of Bailey, because she mentioned her in her speech for that mm-hmm. slammy back when she did that. Yeah, she did. I would love to see Bailey on the main roster. Yeah. I think any one of them would be a great addition. Uh, we mentioned NXT. Let's move on to the one match that did not have anyone from NXT. Sting versus Triple H. Uh, <laughs> the intro for Triple H was uh, insane. I loved it. Me too. How much money do you think that cost to set up? Not that much. It was just some props. I mean, well, I don't know. Those robots could have been running around. You don't know. They, <laughs> it is the future. <laughs> Hey, wow, what the Uh-oh. hell? See? It's Schwarzenegger here. I don't see that coming. It's, it's time to play the game. <laughs> I can't do a good Arnold impression. I see that. Yeah. Um, it, it was a great intro. I mean, is this Jurassic Park? What's happening? Outside of, <laughs> outside of Triple H, all the new guys got the really cool entrances this year. Rusev entrance was Rusev one of the coolest was awesome. things. Sting, Sting, Sting had the band. That was pretty cool. But, you know, I think Triple H kind of out, outshined him in that particular scenario. I like, I like Braze with the Scarecrow. And he won Braze the damn awesome. match. Triple I H. can't believe Triple H won that match. But... Luckily, there was a lot of like shenanigans. The that way it made happened, happen. the way it happened, made it work. You know, I was you, very entertained. You come in when you get Shawn Michaels to come in and do a super kick. That's fine. You can lose on that. Well, and not just that. Like, I mean, we had everybody. DX and NWO in the same ring at the same time. And both their music were hitting. Is that, you know what I'm saying? What like? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. It's, it's kind of like when you play the Beatles album backwards. Yeah. It just talks to you. What is he talking about today? These things he's coming up with. I'm, this is what happens when you when I drive your car from San Jose and I sleep three hours. I get up and I go to CrossFit and I come here. I'm delirious. And it's awesome. Um... What a great moment, though, to have NWO representing. I had some people that were like, oh, Sting and NWO never really. I was like, yeah, I get it. But it's more of the symbolism of right. the fact that NWO is representing WCW. It was such a cool, never going to happen again kind of moment. The only thing that was really missing there for me was I was hoping we would get a flare run in. Mm. Or a flare walk in. Yeah, let's, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I could see that, but it's also like. They were the two factions. Yeah, that could be something down the road. You never know. But, yeah, never did I think we would see DX and NWO in the ring at the same time. Yeah. And they were taking... Razor Ramon took a back body drop. Outside outside the ring, he took a back body drop. Yeah. What the... Good, good on him. You're not supposed I mean, to do that, Scott. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Hey, listen, yo. He, hey, listen, he wanted another WrestleMania moment, okay? And he got it. He got it. He and and then got Hulk it. Hogan, X-Pac, shoved Hogan from behind. I haven't seen Hogan fall down in years. Yeah. He's had eight back surgeries. <laughs> like, I'm seriously, I was, I got nervous. Yeah. But, but man. Such a, such a, that is really what a WrestleMania moment is. I mean, things that you just never expect. And we knew they were all in town for the most part. You know, they were at the Hall of Fame or, you know, whatever. Makes, but it just makes for a fun story. Like, you it know, was really that's, cool. that's, that's what we were talking about. It's not always about how a match ends, it's yeah. about the story that happens throughout it. And yeah. that was just a culmination. We probably should have guessed that WCW is never going to go over on WWE if that's the <laughs> angle that they're working. But it also gives Sting some motivation to wrestle again. And Thank I think you. that that's more important in the long term than it is to have him win that one match and then be what? Like, what does he have to accomplish after that? Exactly. Well, and, and him and Triple H shook hands, so, yeah. you know, and then Triple H, I'm sorry, uh, Sting, after Monday Night Raw, didn't really have much to say. He's like, ah, I don't know, whatever they want me to do, I'll do it. <laughs> great, great exclusive just, interview, buddy. It was really I weird. just really <laughs> hope that we don't see Undertaker Sting. It just... No, I mean, I I thought you wanted that at some point. I did want that at some point, but with Sting, I thought Sting was going to win, you know? Uh, I thought Sting was going to win. I don't think you can have Sting come into WWE, and if, you know, he only wrestles, like, on these huge, you know, WrestleMania cards and things, you can't just have him lose. I'd like to see, well, if they're just going to continue to bury Bray Wyatt every time he goes up against somebody with a big name, why not have him wrestle Sting? (laughs) I know what I want to see. 
What? I want to see Taker Bray Wyatt part two next year. Yes. Bray Wyatt wins. Undertaker goes out. Yeah. Yes. And then Sting do something else. Sting versus Undertaker. I don't want it. Then you don't say no to him. My only thing is neither of those guys appeared on Raw last night, so the likelihood seems slim. Yeah. That's yeah. We didn't we didn't hear about anything about the Undertaker Bray match, and I can't imagine that's going to be a big SmackDown thing. Maybe it will. It is a star-studded SmackDown, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. It will. I just found that very very odd that we didn't hear about anything about Bray Taker. Well, I mean, I- I'm surprised there was no Triple H on Raw last night. Yeah. I, uh, he hurt his leg. It definitely looked. Oh, did he? I mean, it was like hella bruised. Is that what that like was? Massive, massive. It just formed in the middle of the match, all the way down from his hip down to his knee. Oh. It was like this giant. It yeah. looked like a, Seam- it looked like a Seamus style bruise. Well, I, I, I thought it was Seamus makeup. We were trying to figure out from the box whether it was makeup no, or a bruise. It was a bruise. And I was like, nope, that's a bruise. Yeah. Interesting. From my seats, you could see it perfectly. Okay. <laughs> now, speaking, speaking of bruises and injuries, we got to talk about that IC title match. Damn. I can't believe Dean Ambrose wasn't concussed or something after that. He went through that ladder. He's a maniac. Well, I'm surprised Truth was able to wrestle before Raw last night, too. His, like, Nick seeing him today, his arm was all banged up. He's like, I couldn't feel part of my hand earlier. Oh, God. He wasn't even in that match very much at the least time. In that well, match. that's what happened. Mm-hmm. And Ambrose, too, once he took that, that drop to the outside from Harper, that was we, it. we didn't see him for the rest of the match. Mm-hmm. How he was able to... I was worried we wouldn't see him for weeks. I didn't know what was going on. And then last night, him and Cena put on a, a, an amazing match. Wow. That was that was the match of the night, in my opinion. I thought for sure Rusev was going to interrupt that match, but no no show for Rusev yesterday, either. Yeah. Well... No, Rusev had a match. He destroyed um, Goldust. Yeah. For two minutes. When was that? Right after you left. Uh, you remember that you had a plane flight? Yeah, catch. I had to fly, sorry. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you didn't miss much in that that's match. That's weird that he wouldn't, so he was there and he didn't run out during the John Cena thing, so they're just done with that. Huh? Two minute match, Gold Dust destroyed Rusev Crush. So that's cool. how that went. Cool. Yep. Huh. I don't know. For me, no match Lana. of the night. No Lana. No, was well, she had to go back to filming, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. No Lana either. To me, it's it's hard to decide. Match of the night, I mean, geez, Ziggler, Daniel Bryan, that was phenomenal. Oh, Raw? Yeah. That was really great. It I, was really I liked the tag match the best with the Luchas debuting. That was great to too. me. Energy-wise, it was just really great. You know, I, I agree Ziggler, Bryan was great, but it felt like a match I'd seen before a bunch of times. Well, we had. Mm-hmm. I, I think maybe they wrestled once before that mm-hmm. I can recall, but yeah. not in a match like that. And I really thought at one point Ambrose was going to win it. Me too. And I'll tell you what, that crowd, John Cena never pays attention to refer to the audience a few times. They were he all, said, y'all are musicians. Oh, they were all <laughs> over him. Well, that's when that was born was last year at the Raw after WrestleMania was the John Cena sucks. Yeah. At least that was the first time I had heard it. So I love that it continues on with it. This is pretty great. Um, that one I can get behind. Um, but, uh, yeah, what do you think about Sheamus debuting as the new <laughs> the new Celtic warrior? I mean, he's undeniably He got Celtic. some you-look-stupid chance. Coming back and, and being, well, pretending to not be a heel and then just smashing Daniel Bryan and Ziggler. Yeah, two, agreed. You know, two of the, arguably the most fan-favorite guys in the, in the WWE right now. I think that's a great way to get instant heat. He was going to get heat one way or the other. Might as well embrace it and come back with a new oh, character look. The, the new look, the mohawk, the, the braids in the in the goat. Which he must have done Monday because I saw him on Sunday and he looked like he used to always look. So it must have been a new thing Wait, they did decided. you see him on Sunday with a hat on or without a hat? Because every time I saw him this weekend, he was wearing a hat. He's always wearing a hat. But think, you could have seen, I saw him from back as well and yeah. he had hair. I think there. he went old school with it. He, he didn't change his look till the day of so no one in public can see it. It yeah. couldn't get on social media. I thought that was really cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we're on board with that for sure. Uh, Rusev Cena. Fantastic uh, road a tank. That's boss. That <sighs> entrance was the coolest thing, and if you weren't already a Rusev fan, you had better be after that. Mm-hmm. Poor Lana. Lost her shoes, got knocked off the mat. Well, she didn't lose her shoes. She tossed she her shoes. Lost her she shoes. She threw her shoes like it was a George Bush protester. You, you know what, Dale? <laughs> I think Lana's going to be okay. I mean, she'll be fine. But I, I'm expecting a little more fallout from that. I mean, agreed. I thought he would say that she cost him the match or something like that. Well, after the match, when she was complaining about her ankle on the ground, Rusev did not help her. He just screamed at her, and then he walked off. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, I like that. I do also like how she was dressed uh, just like the uh, Bridget Nielsen in Rocky Four. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, huh? All white, had the, the dead animal thing on her shoulder. Yeah. But that was a fantastic match. What do y'all think about Bray Wyatt Undertaker? 
I liked it. You yeah. know, it is what it is. Like we knew it would be a slower match. Yeah, I expect slower from Undertaker. I just um, uh, I thought there were some really cool moments in it. Yeah, I loved know? when he was doing his crab walk uh, and, and Undertaker, Undertaker sits up. up. That was that such was a cool, cool moment. That, I really like that. I mean, right now, I'm not sure, but it was um, when yeah, Bray's doing the crab walk. Undertaker sits up and they just stare at each other. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I I just I don't know. I, I felt really yucko about the finish just because I don't feel like Undertaker needs to win. The streak is already over. I think it was more for the fans to be like, we're sorry that we broke your hearts last year. He, here. He won again. <laughs> I don't know if it really did. It wasn't for Bray. That's for damn sure. And I thought kind of this whole program was Bray carrying yep. everything since the Undertaker wasn't even there. And to th- as excited as we all were to go into a program that, from a guy that we hadn't seen in a whole year, yeah. I think Bray deserved more credit than that. And now he has two losses in a row. Yes, they're I, against big guys, but I also think you have to look at the card as a whole. I don't think you could have had both Sting and Undertaker losing on a WrestleMania card. All the, all the guys won, though. Everyone that everybody likes, for the most part, won. Yeah. So I think we could have dealt with a little more heartache or a little more... Bray Wyatt is the new face of fear, except not because he lost. You know what I mean? They're just, they're just building things. That... I, I have a feeling with this one, and normally I won't say that. And I'm hoping I'm right here. I really hope I'm right. But I feel like they have a plan in place with Bray Wyatt to move forward past this. They have to. I hope so. And I feel like that is part of why he was kept off this Raw last night. Hmm. Or the fact that he... I mean, the rumor was he hurt his ankle before even going into that Undertaker match. Which we, we couldn't tell. Yeah. He I mean, moved fine, as far as I could tell. But if that is true, it would also explain him not being on the show. I'm cool with Taker winning if it means part two next year, and then Bray goes out on Bray goes on top, and then Undertaker leaves. I think that's a... They've only done that once in the history of the company ever. Yeah. So that's a pretty far reach. Well, I like to reach far, though. <laughs> hey, man, I'm with you. I've been saying that for months. So mm-hmm. yeah. I'm I'm hoping that's what it is, too. Good luck on that, guys. Also, uh, Damian Mizdow, it's, it's, it's a funny transition we have here since he is our guest on the show. What an amazing number of moments he had in that battle royal. That was his battle royal, essentially. A-Rai had a great moment with raging out, but he got you know knocked out right after that. Hideo had the a, help of Damian yeah. Sandow, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, Hideo, yeah. Yeah, making his debut, but Big Show knocked him out. Hopefully yeah, that, damn, I guess damn, that starts something. Show. And, and you know what? It took 29 other men to throw out. And, and, and it's true. <laughs> it's like you wrote his promo for him. You said it like two days before he said on the road. Like, that's what he's going to say. It took 29 guys to throw me out. You're right. He did. That's exactly yeah. what he said. Um, good for Look, that was a good spot for him. Yeah. yeah. You know, it works. It fits the character that they're trying to do with him. We didn't even expect him to make it to the ring. Yeah, a lot so, of people didn't think he'd get so in there. So the fact that all 29 of them ganged up. That was a cool moment. Yeah. I think he's going to, this is going to keep happening until people, it's almost like with 3MB. They kept getting crushed and crushed and crushed. Yeah. So people were like, hey, we like you guys. Yeah. So good on him. But uh, yeah, I think this was Ms. Dow's moment. Even by losing, I mean, he lost to the biggest guy on the roster. And I don't think he almost had him too. Oh, yeah. man. That was such a great. First off, when he, when Miz is like poking him in the chest over and over again, uh-huh. throws him out. And then him and Big Show, they had some, really good mini match together and how he's just kind of choking him trying to get him over the ropes I really thought he was going to get him me too wow but you can't have the same ending as last year right yeah I mean that's almost exactly what happened last year with Cesaro and Big Show it's it came down to two of them and then Cesaro overcame so I think this helps him out have something new to work with for a minute Mm -hmm. because he hasn't really had any real momentum except for just being the lackey of the authority you know you say that and that would have been great if they would have done something with that on Monday Night Raw but instead he comes out the trophy's there they don't even acknowledge that he's like the winner basically I mean maybe they did on commentary they did acknowledge it yeah yeah. Um, wait Ms. Dow Ms. Dow was phenomenal um, and it he had a really great tweet after WrestleMania that just thanked the fans and how so many good tweets really yeah and they just they made him feel incredible and then he deserves it he's been doing this for so many years and, and we talk about an interview with him about how he's getting his just due and he's a good guy yes like, like he's very humble and very respectful of people and you mm-hmm. can tell he loves the business and the Miz attacked him on Raw so we have a hell of a program coming up yeah cannot wait to see that but we can't wait for you to listen to our interview with Damian Mizdow so without further ado this is us last week and Monday Night Raw talking to him just a very candid conversation we hope you enjoy it we'll be right back this is a this is a good time dale it's a good time to be on this show you know why, why? That, Johnny? i can tell you why <laughs> because we have a, a man we have an individual we have a superstar we've been wanting to have on the show since we began well over a year ago um he's gone by a few different names he's gone by a few different monikers if you will uh please welcome to the show damian mizdow hello hello 
How's it going, sir? It's going great. We're out here in L.A. right now getting ready for WrestleMania, of course, which will be in San Jose slash San Francisco. And uh, we're, we're all excited. We're all ready to go. And uh, feeling is good. Now, you in particular seem uh, like this could be your poise to maybe have your biggest WrestleMania moment yet. Would you say that's uh, accurate? You know, yeah, the uh, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, obviously, it's a uh, it's a huge thing. You know, not the namesake, too, and the prestige that goes along with it. And um, I still am the Miz's personal assistant, yeah. so there there's a little bit of a conflict there. Uh, mm-hmm. Do I help him win or... Do I try? So it's uh, I haven't quite dis- you know it's it's torn. I mean I'm contractually obligated to help the Miz, but uh, when you're out there at WrestleMania, you know it's uh, it's a different bird. Things happen, uh, emotions take over, and I guess we'll just have to see what happens. I look at it this way: he hasn't put you in a movie yet, mm-hmm. so what do you really owe him? I say nothing. No, true. Huh? I never really thought about acting before. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what has he really done for you? Mm-hmm. Not much. I, I hadn't thought about it like that. Wow. Yeah. So, so what was wow. your involvement in the, the Marine Four then? You must have been doing a few things, right? Well, um, I was I was stunt doubling, um, but it was kind of strange. My stunt doubling consisted of getting him water and making sure his clothes were pressed. So I think it was oh. more or less a personal assistant role yeah. back Mar- then even. The Marines know. have to stay hydrated, so maybe that's part of... I guess, yeah, I guess. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a fair assessment. Yeah. Um, I do have a question. Back... Before you became the personal mm-hmm. assistant, mm-hmm. you were uh, incredible at coming up with characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the most fun you've had with any of those characters that you did? Say the whether it was LeBron James or well the um, the interpretive dancer was uh, was quite fun. <laughs> I uh, and a good outfit. You know the uh, they I, they wanted to actually dress me like Fandango, and uh, I was like, no, you know what? How about this? Let's uh, if I'm going to do this, I need a body leotard, preferably flesh colored. And a ribbon, a stick, and I'll take care of the rest. And, Much uh, like in the Big Lebowski. Yes, there we go. There we go. <laughs> so it was, uh, yeah, that, that was a lot of fun. Um, the, uh, God, uh, Davy Crockett was fun. Oh, yeah. That was um, classic. Magneto was, was a, oh, a blast, uh-huh. too. So, yeah, it, it, it's been fun. The, uh, the, like, the, the spectrum of things to which I've done have been uh Well, Magneto you know, was so enjoyable. great. That demanded a sequel. Thank you. That's I, right. Yes, and, uh, you know, who knows? Stay tuned, so maybe we'll get a WWE version of Magneto. I even loved uh, when they announced the WWE 2K15 mm-hmm. stuff. Your your video game character yes. that you came out with was was pretty Thank spectacular, you. And very Thank spot you. Yes, on. That was, my, that was my interpretation of gamers, and uh, <laughs> so it's just like Which slightly was cutting, but very good. very close. Thank you to reality. You. Now Xavier Woods might take a little umbrage to that, but I mean, you know, well, he, he's the exception. Xavier's a uh, you know a much more. Um, Streamlined, mainstream, well-rounded. Gamer, I think. Yeah. Every I time know. we talk to him, I always have to ask him, "How do you have time?" He knows everything about video games, and I'm like, "How do you have time to be a doctor, yeah. a wrestler, and a gamer?" I don't know. Well, how. he's got his PhD in time management, apparently. <laughs> Zinga. And not to mention your rap skills that we just saw two weeks ago. Thank you. Yes, uh, when the time comes to break people off something proper, show them what time it is, and drop a couple beats, I uh, I am prepared. Got to get in where you fit in. Amen. I've heard that before. How many uh, how many face tattoos? I, I lost count of uh, Wiz Khalifa. Uh, you know, I was I was too busy rapping, and in the moment, I, I really didn't count. Okay, he's an impressively tattooed individual, <laughs> yes. and a very talented individual as well. Oh yeah. So if we see, you know, some some issues at WrestleMania between you and Miz, do you think that we see you going in a different direction afterwards? You know, I, I at this point, I don't know. That will. Oh. I could very well stick to the plan. Miz wins. Everything's happy. We coast. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to let emotions get the best of me, and then I don't know what Miz's reaction to that will be. So there's questions, which is, uh, you know, a reason to stay tuned. Um, WrestleMania and the following Monday at Raw. What's been the most frustrating thing about about working with Miz? Because we all know your intelligence. We all know you're probably arguably the most intelligent superstar in the WWE. Um, How difficult has that been working with the Miz when he talks down to you so much? He claims it's tough love. Um, sometimes I don't think it is, but again, at the end of the day, sometimes you just got to suck it up for the greater good, and that's what I do. I think that's what Nietzsche said: the greater good for the greater. Yes, might be a direct quote. Am yes. I correct on that one? Yeah. Maybe, probably not. I'm not usually correct. I'll just toss out a name in history, and just people assume. <laughs> and just it's hope correct. that you were right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you it's know, the Inquisition. It was. Yeah. The, it was. A, what did that yeah, it happened. Uh, we've got this Grey Poupon here. I feel like your your old character that, that you used to have could do a Grey Poupon commercial, don't you feel? Yes, except that is in a plastic container, and mm. I believe my old character would uh, would want it out of the smaller glass container That's and true. would only spread it with a sterling silver knife. 
going to say yeah, a I mean, tiny, yeah. a tiny <laughs> little spoon. Yes. Uh, let's talk comedy because obviously you're someone that has to appreciate comedy mm-hmm. because you're so good mm-hmm. at it. Mm-hmm. Is there a favorite? Give us your favorite top two or three films of all time. Uh, in the comedy genre, uh, National Lampoon's uh, Christmas Vacation, nice. Uh, nice. Cousin Eddie, and uh, well, and I, I'll do Christmas Vacation and the original Vacation. Um, Solid. Randy Quaid's interpretation of Cousin Eddie, I think, is the absolute funniest <laughs> like portrayal of any character in cinema because everyone can relate to someone like that in their family and. It just his execution of that was just awesome, and I think they're actually making another national Lamp- they're, they're remaking national. Yeah, Lamp- how do you feel about something. that? Well, there's not going to be a cousin Eddie. I heard. I, I don't think Randy Quaid's allowed to do much right now. And Chris He's... Chris Hemsworth is is in it as well. Oh wow! He's like the son, wow. I believe. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Rusty takes his family on vacation. I, I, I was reading about something like that. Wow, but, Rusty uh, got really good looking. Oh my god! <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, like that. I will laugh out loud every time, and I I know you know both movies pretty much by heart, but. Every time Cousin Eddie comes on there, I will just... I imagine uh, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters was good. Um, I, I was a kid when that came out, so I, like, I always thought it was a more serious movie as a kid. I was like, oh, <laughs> right. my God, they're, they're out zapping ghosts, more or less. So you know, when, when you're eight or nine years old, you kind of view that a little bit differently. But <laughs> it's funny to kind of go and rewatch it because you, you kind of you catch things that like yeah. you didn't when you were a kid. So yeah. that's... Uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a lot darker than I remember it. Also, like, oh really? When I went back and watched oh. it. It it has some like very adult themed things going mm. on inside of that. It, yeah. it stands the test of time, though. I mean, it any, does. anything I mean, with Harold Ramis, yeah, a, a giant know. marshmallow man taking over the city. You know, that's, that's <laughs> I'm sure there's some double on there or something there. like that. And so. now I'm a, I'm the kind of guy that says I almost like Ghostbusters two better than the original. Do you remember one of the greatest handshakes in movie history? It was in Ghostbusters two, with the slime. Remember the guy, remember Vigo, that little uh, creepy guy with the accent? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, let's. we're going to recreate the greatest handshake mm-hmm. in movie history. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. Uh, you'll be Dr. Venkman, mm-hmm. and I'll be the creepy guy. So this is not going to involve any kind of slime or anything, right? No, nothing right? weird. Okay. Put, your, put your hand out. This is definitely a setup, it feels like. Oh, yes, like. Dr. Venkman, yes. Remember that <laughs> handshake? Ah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes, My favorite. absolutely, absolutely. Shaking a finger. My favorite mm-hmm. handshake of all time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very cool. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I may use that someday. That is actually pretty good. Let's get back to, obviously, your career. Um, you've been at this a long, long time. You've been here specifically for, for quite a long time. A lot of people don't realize. Now you're finally getting your just due. How does Thank it feel you. to know that? And obviously, you, you go out there, and, and the whole universe is so behind you. Um, you know, and it, it's funny. Like, every WWE superstar, yes, your goal is to main event WrestleMania and become the WWE champion. And those are still my goals, but... I was so tunnel vision when I first like that was going to be my purpose, but like in doing that, like I my time here, I I really have developed a relationship with um, you know the WWE universe, and um, to me that that genuine just reaction I get, and when I do something like and the more reaction I get, the more I'll do, and it, like we kind of have this thing where it's we, we go back and forth, and um, to me you can never put a price on that, you can never equate that to to anything and that like that is it's entertainment in its purest form but like i that, that is something like my relationship with the wwe universe um I, I really cannot express what it means to me and what it means to perform in front of them and to kind of have the rapport we have and uh you know i i yes am i still working adamantly towards my first two goals absolutely but like i've realized that sometimes you know Yes, we all want to be in the main event and, you know, that kind of top-tier guys. But um, to me, like, in their eyes, I am. So I, I, I can't ask for anything more than that. I, I really can't. I mean, speaking of which, I mean, you, you won money in the bank, mm-hmm. and it didn't to actually go your way in the mm-hmm. end, you know, with Cena. Was that a surprise to you that it can't, went that way? Uh, at the time, yes. But you know what? One thing always leads to another, and I got to – if if I hadn't lost it, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now, yeah. which is a great – great spot to be in and it's, it's, it, I'm just at a great place right now. And I think what really rings true to, to anyone that watches you is mm-hmm. you're always in the moment yes. and, and that's like any great performer you. whether you're an actor, whether Absolutely. you're a comic, whether you're a wrestler mm-hmm. and I think so many people can learn by watching someone like you because it's just Thank so you. obvious. Maybe some things are, you know, you have a script if mm-hmm. you will but like mm-hmm. you go out there and you're in the moment mm-hmm. and people recognize that mm-hmm. and it just goes through the television. I think that's part of the reason. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's, well, that's why you can make a unitard work as well as Magneto. Exactly. You know? Exactly. I've dressed like an astronaut. Baby <laughs> crying. <laughs> hey, if, 
if it's working, I'm there. You know? Yep. Where do you have a, do you have a spot reserved for your trophy? Um, I don't, but I'll, I'm sure I'll find something. It's a big. <laughs> it is. It is. Yes. You know, so Cesaro didn't hang on to it much last year. No, but one I think, and done yeah, on I think that it's one. reinforced this year. Don't break it. Don't <laughs> break it after you win yeah. it. Just keep it. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Awesome. Thanks so much awesome. for your time. Thank you guys for having me. All right. Well, safe to say that this was the capper to WrestleMania 31 weekend, finishing this show right now. Oh, man. I'm going to need a vacation. You are going on oh. vacation. <laughs> oh, funny you say that, Dale. Uh, by, the time, alert. <laughs> by the time you are listening or hearing this, Dale Rutledge will be on his way to Japan. Japan. Is that how it's pronounced? I don't know. I want to tell you something about that, by the way, Dale. Okay. I got a text message from Lance White today, mm-hmm. and he said, one, to tell you to have a good time. Mm-hmm. So, but two, he said, and funny story, you know how before when you were trying to buy the tickets Mm -hmm. and there was like not set up for Americans to be able to use credit cards? Yeah. Now it is. (laughs) But the show was in like a week. Yeah, he, t- he tells you story. He goes, so funny story. Uh, they finally set it up, and I guess it's because they try and pretend like they're so modern and advanced, and wow. everyone was like, we want to buy tickets, and I we mean, can't. Just a quick story is that to help me get the ticket, I couldn't figure out the Japanese website, uh, so Lance helped me out, and then he said, well, they don't take credit cards for some reason, and so... He actually was nice enough. They deducted the money out of his payroll. Dear God. To buy my tickets, and then I sent him the money separately. Like, thank you that's so a, that's much. That's a big that's trust crazy. Right there, yeah. yeah, I can't believe that he even would trust something like that. I mean, I'm Chuck's I friend. I, yeah, I mean. <laughs> should scare him off. He was um, like, he's like, he's not going to take the money and run, is he? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be at uh, uh, Invasion Attacks. So if anybody's going, tweet me. Let me know. What's the meetup? If there's ever a right moment for this sound drop. <laughs> Hell yeah. Have a great time in Japan, Dale. Uh, guys, thank you so much. This is our first video show, so if you're listening to this, you can go back and watch it on YouTube, and I think you'll really enjoy it, because we have all types of fun pictures, we have our logo, we just have us looking good. Now, I mean, uh, with that said, let's put ourselves over um, at Wrestling Buds on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Buds. Please give us a like. Of course, if you don't have iTunes, you can listen to us on AfterBuzzTV.com. Just search Wrestling and Padres. You'll find us. And we have some uh, really cool stuff in the works over the next coming weeks. So, Dale Rutledge, put yourself over. I am The Walking Dale on Instagram and Twitter. You can also find me in Japan for the next week and a half. Yeah. And then I'll be in Korea. And then I'll be back right now. We're going to miss you. Oh, I'm not going to call in. I don't know. I was going to say I was going to call in, but that's never going to happen. Yeah, but that's <laughs> really, you're not going to. Just send us a picture. We'll do a photo collage of I'll you. I'll send photos from uh, Invasion Attacks at the, at the very least. That's perfect. There we yeah. go. Chuck. You can find me on Twitter at CRice17. You can find me on Instagram at Chuck Rice. Um, 10th, uh, it's going to be limited theatrical run and will be on video on demand. If you are in Los Angeles and you want to come to the premiere on April 10th, shoot me a tweet and we'll get something set up for you. Sounds like a plan. At Jay Quasto on Twitter. Hey, Arizona, I am going to be there April 2nd to 5th. That's this week. That's now. That's it. That's right now. All right. If you're in Scottsdale, please go to Stand Up Scottsdale. I'm there every single night, Thursday to Sunday. I'd love to see you. Hit me up on social media. I'll send you the ticket link. And uh, what else is going on? TheThumbWrestler.com. Check out my film that's now getting submitted to festivals, making me go broke. Other than that, uh, thank you guys so much. The show keeps growing, and we're so excited to have video here on AfterBuzz TV. We think it's going to be great, and we're going to be able to live chat and all that good stuff. And uh, I just want to say also a shout-out to, you know, I know we talked about it the live podcast we did, but God, that kid Vinny. Yes. I love that kid and Matthew. Those two made my night. Right. Thank you to everyone that came out to the live podcast. Vinny, I never met a 12 year old named Vinny. Awesome. He called me Mr. Rutledge, which was very He called adorable. me Mr. Rice. So I was like, Mr. oh, wow. It was, it was he great. Said, he says, will you sign my program? And I go, kid, yeah. you don't want me to sign that. It's going to bring down the best. Thank you to all the Australians that came out. We love Australia, right? Sure. Yeah, they were there. Why wouldn't we? Why, why not? I've never met a not cool Australian. That's a good point. I mean, come on. I love Australian chicks, too, for our. Oh, oh boy. All right, good laugh. <laughs> 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 All right, guys, have a great week at Wrestling Buds. We'll see you soon. We love you.